Hey everyone, welcome back to The Daily Try. This is the Triathlon Weekly News Roundup presented by TheFeed.com. Thank you so much for joining me for another week of headlines, results, PTO rankings changes, and upcoming races. And I'm not gonna talk too much about the Ironman Nice World Champs as I've made quite a few videos on that, so check those out if you wanna know more about that. But diving into the results from this weekend, there was Challenge Al Mare, which looks like an amazing race with so many spectators and fans and uh, yeah, it just blew me away. But not as much as Menno Coolhouse blew away his competition. I had to look up a bit about Menno as um, I've heard his name come up a few times this year. He's having a fantastic year. He's a short course athlete, he's gone to long course. He snuck a top 10 recently at 70.3 World Champs and then went up in distance to this race and he won by over 11 minutes. And if you're getting I, is it the course record? It is. Crazy, just crazy. I'm uh, suddenly I'm a good biker. Now Kieran Linders, though, I think stole all the headlines as he just barely, I mean by inches, made it to the finish line. It was brutal to watch. Thankfully, he was okay by all accounts. I think he will race with a little bit more caution in the future. I heard Jonathan Brownlee say that in his viral video uh, after Alistair Brownlee helped carry him to the finish lines. I think he'll still be happy with a second place result, a really good result for him. And then Alice Visser unsurprisingly took the win, win on the women's side. And then there was also 70.3 Sunshine Coast down in Australia. I've been there before and man, that would be a beautiful place to race. It was Rebecca Clark who took the win on the women's side and a surprising Nick Thompson out of nowhere result for him. He has uh, had a good few races this season, and uh, yeah, I think that is a career best result by far for him. So he beat the likes of Nicholas Free, Mitch Kibbe, and Stephen McKenna, no less. But then there was a few other races this weekend, but I'll save those for the news headlines. But this week deserves a rankings update because there were some big moves after the world champs. Menno, who we just talked about, moves up to rank 24 in the world, which means he potentially could land himself a spot in the PTO races next year, which I think is going to be even more valuable than ever with 16 contracts, probably up for grabs, but they haven't given us an exact number of athletes who they're trying to sign for those contracts just yet. Apparently they are going to try and make a drive to survive type of documentary out of it. And that could lead to so much exposure for these athletes. I heard that from Talva Cox and Pro Tri News on their latest episode. It's a great one, go check it out. A guy like Menno could move right at the end of the season into a spot to nab some PTO races. That would be an incredible achievement. Then moving up from there, Sam Laidlow, he went to number three in the world, moves up from number 10. Christian Blumenfeld and Magnus Ditlev stay at number one and two. And then Patrick Langa moves up from number 12 to number five after that ridiculous run in Nice. However, I think he is still eyeing that sub 230 run. And after he's come so close twice, could you imagine if somebody steals that from him? The likes of Dennis Chevro or Matt Hansen potentially on a fast day. That'll be interesting to keep our eyes on. Other notable risers from Nice include Leon Chevalier into number 11. That's a great spot for him. In fourth place, Rudy Bonberg going to number 20. Again, giving him a shout for those PTO contracts, as well as Arthur Horseau, who is one of my top performers from the weekend. So he's up to 26th place. But that moves us on nicely to the news headline because Taylor Nib needs a third result for her PTO rankings as only their 2023 results will count at the end of this year. And she did a little interview with GTN saying that she will regardless be in Kona because her mom will be racing. But also in that interview, she did say that she'll see if she'll be racing and she always does. I really thought by the way she said it and the way she sounds that she will be racing. Now that's me speculating. Uh, yeah, it also showed how much he did care and was thinking about those PTO rankings. There is a big bonus at the end of the year. Uh, yeah, if she's there, it seems like even more incentive for her to race. But I think her one drawback would be how her health is and uh, she doesn't want to overdo it. But yeah, I think that was clear, pretty clear indication we'll be seeing her toe the line. But moving on from there, we had a double header win for the US at World Cup Carlo Vivari with Gwen Jorgensen and Morgan Pearson taking huge results for them on their way to the Olympics in 2024. Gwen Jorgensen, in fact, after that win, which was an epic sprint finish, by the way, 
Um, she picked up a start on the grand final in Ponte Vedra, which is another opportunity for her to qualify for the Olympics. So the ball is really rolling for Gwen. I think a lot of US fans are stoked to see her doing well, but a lot of other women on the US team trying to qualify might not be as happy. And then Morgan Pearson's result was no less special because he got a breakaway on the bike, which we don't often see in short course racing since the time of the Brownlee brothers who did it often back in the day. Just a ridiculous bike ride from him. And then he increased his lead on the run. So showing what great shape he is. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend checking out the interview I did with him because he is on track right now, in my opinion, to medal for the US in Paris. So keep an eye on Morgan, especially after that result. But then speaking of US athletes and short course racing, I think the big headline for this week Jason West is on the start list for World Cup Brasilia. Does this mean he is going for the Paris 2024 Olympics? That seems to be the only reasonable explanation. And there doesn't really seem like a reason why not. With the current form he's been in, his swim has been front pack, his biking has been phenomenal, and his running has been on another level. So yeah, if he's competing with the likes of Christian Blumenfeld at the PTO races, why not try and race him at the Olympics? And I uh, can't wait to see how he does. Maybe it's a sort of situation where he's just gonna try it out. If he's at that level, he'll keep going. But uh, um, yeah, I think uh, it'll be fun to watch no less. So keep an eye out on Jason West. But moving on to a couple of guys who know a lot about short course racing, Javier Gomez and Alistair Brownlee are back succeeding and looking fitter than ever. Javier Gomez won a triathlon again in Santander. He's been out for 18 months since Ironman 70.3 Pucon in January 2022. He's 40 years old, so this is the perfect time for him to be back in shape. Apparently, he's been dealing with multiple injuries, not just one. And uh, yeah, with his coach Dan Flues, it looks like he's getting back to good shape and I really reckon we'll see him as a wild card on those PTO races next year. Also, Alistair Brownlee winning a gravel stage race. So it's great to see his fitness is still high. Hopefully his running comes around again soon. And uh, yeah, we do see him back on the start list like he plans to be towards the end of this year. But speaking of start lists, there will be definitely one less this year with Clash Daytona not having a pro race. Now, they haven't officially announced it yet, but apparently athletes have been getting word that they need not plan to race that race, which is such a bummer as I think it's a fantastic race, a great distance that always attracts a lot of short course athletes to try it out. It's at a good time of the year. You get a lot of spectators. It's just unfortunate for the US pro scene to lose that race. Hopefully this doesn't mean it's permanent, but I've heard they've been struggling to get age groupers. And hopefully this isn't a bad sign for Clash. We'd love to see them grow and keep offering pro racing. So, but those are the main headlines for this week. Now onto the article of the week, and this one was fantastic. It's so well-timed in my opinion. Triathlete brought up an old article they did on Sam Laidlow back in 2018. He was leading the Cannes International Triathlon ahead of Javier Gomez, no less, until 50 kilometers into the bike, his rear derailleur snapped and he had to carry his bike six kilometers uphill. And then he ended up just insane. And I think that's the attitude of someone who ends up in becoming the Ironman world champion. And then moving on from there, the video of the week, the Tri Kings video that On made about Christian and Gustav. Wow, what a masterpiece. 337,000 views when I last checked. I thought that was so fun. And uh, yeah, probably brought a lot of eyes to those two. And uh, it looks like there will be some more of those, which I would love to see. My hot take, would you pay to watch Iron Man's broadcast without the ads. Do you think it is worth paying for? Or do you think uh, the free version is good enough? I personally think I would pay a little fee to watch without ads. Just watch it through and not have those interruptions. And how much would you be willing to pay? So leave it down below. And then my other hot take, which I brought up in my niece takeaway video, is that I'm not sure all the pros will continue to race in Kona and in Nice. I think They'll pick one or the other to really focus on, especially with the PTO races and the fact that you can be crowned world champion of the PTO. So if you wanna hear more about that one, head over to check out that other video. And finally, we're on to the humor of the week. And uh, yeah, this was brilliant. Speaking of 
Patrick Langa's run. I thought this one was brilliant. Patrick Langa just running out of real estate to become world champion for the third time. However, I think that is something he really still has his eyes on. And uh, yeah, we'll be guns a blazing for Kona next year. But if you're looking for more racing, there's lots upcoming this weekend with Challenge Samarkand in Uzbekistan, attracting the likes of Freddie Funk, Aaron Royal, and Sebastian Keenley heading out to that country to make a statement. And then 70.3 Belgium has Peter Hemrick and Kyle Smith going head to head on the men's side and Lucy Hall and Emily Morier going to be racing there too. And then there's 70.3 Michigan with all the North American top athletes, including Lionel Sanders, Trevor Foley, Jackson Laundrie, Matt Sharp, and Sam Appleton, to name a few. And then there's two Ironmans, Ironman Italy with a $50,000 prize purse. It's just a men's race. And uh, David McNamee and Florian Anger will be competing for that Kona spot for next year. And uh, there's also Ironman Maryland, where Sam Long is also trying to get a Kona spot. He's the big headline there. I think a lot of athletes will be trying to get this Kona spot early if they can, especially with those PTO races coming up next year. And I'd recommend keeping your eye on Jason Pohl, who uh, I think could be a dark horse to do really well there. And also on the women's side, Alice Alberts, who I did a podcast with, you should check out. She is probably the favorite for that race. Can she get her second Ironman win? But that's it for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I've contacted the giveaway winner for the Morton Starter Pack from the Dark Horse episode. If you guys would like to win another Morton Starter Pack, I will be giving away another one to somebody who follows me on Instagram this month. So make sure you head over there, give me a follow, and I'll contact you if you're chosen. So thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Thank you for watching the video. If you're new around here, then don't forget to subscribe. This channel is all about helping triathlon become a huge sport through weekly news videos, highlights, motivational videos, race reporting, and anything else you can think of with a splash of my own triathlon journey thrown in. The goal is for this to become the YouTube hub for everything professional triathlon, and I'd love to do it full time to give back to you and create an amazing community. To help me do that, I need you to get behind me by supporting me for the price of a gel on either Patreon or buy me a copy. You can also join in on the conversation on Discord and follow me on Instagram. The more support, the more content. And don't forget, it's simple. Try every day. We'll see you in the next one.